Gurus with Thermal Grizzly at Computex 2025. We've seen Joe Roby over the years with another liquid cooling company. Joe is now the chief designer. You're chief designer. I'm the head of R&D for mechanical products, not for the paste, can't do that. That, mechanical <laughs> products, but not paste or pads. Joe's gonna talk about the manufacturing process of a water block. Go for it, Joe. So this is the cold plate from our 5090 Astral Deltamate block. It's first machined uh, from the front side and they're actually machined in a One plate. One thing, the material. Copper. Thank you. 100% copper. Uh, so it's machined from one side while they're in a plate of four. All four get flipped together and the opposite side's machined, uh, but all of the bright surfaces are just roughed out then. Then we take the four pieces out of the big tile uh, and they're glass blasted all over with glass beads, very fine glass beads. Uh, and that's how we get the, the satin finish on the copper. And is the satin finish purely aesthetic or is there some legit reason for doing it other than looks? It's purely aesthetic. Okay. It removes all of the machine marks that would be visible, okay. uh, which, is, which is not a lot. They're very well finished, but it takes them all off. And then it gets loaded back into the machine individually. Um, and all of the surfaces are machined again, so they have a mirror finish. And this is machined where? This is machined in Germany at Thermal Grizzly headquarters. Right. Uh, and then the final operation is for the screws for the terminal uh, and these, these holes through into the water passages. And then the entire thing gets nickel plated and you end up with these two finishes, the bright finish on contact surfaces and the satin finish everywhere else. So if your block didn't have a window, if it was acetal cover and opaque, Will this be a complete waste of time? It would look very nice yeah. when you see it for about 10 minutes assembling it. But the customer wouldn't get the benefit. So this yep. only makes sense, the extra cost and the hassle only makes sense because the block has a window to show it off to the world. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And if you have colored coolant in your block, do you lose it? Basically, is this for clear coolant? Um, it, it does play very nicely on the lighting. Okay. So you get a very even illumination. It's not like it's lighting up streaks of machining marks. Okay. Uh, it looks really clean under light with coolant inside. But and yeah, if you put an opaque coolant, you would hide it. And if an operator gets a fingerprint on this when they're working with it at any stage in the production, what's the consequence? If it's early enough, they might get away with it. Right. But uh, if it's after sandblasting, it would be scrapped. Okay, because the fingerprint is, is captured for all time. Yeah, under the nickel. Okay, <laughs> and you, you were mentioning during the production process, how are these blocks stored as they move through the production cycle? Um, so they're, they're first in a tile of four, and when they're taken out of the tile and sandblasted, after that they go into uh, like a, a bath of uh, benzene, and then they have to be handled with gloves after that, taken out one by one, loaded into the machine, cleaned again afterwards, and then back. And at the end, um, when everything's machined and sandblasted, we actually vacuum seal them right. to send them to the nickel plate so they, they go out like little packs of meat. Oh, so, <laughs> I was about to ask, so you're storing them under liquid to protect them from the atmosphere. Could you protect them in, say, a, a, an inert gas? Is it just the choice is liquid because it's just dropping in out of the Yeah, bath. pretty pretty practical to put them in, yeah. And the benzene yeah. self-cleaning, you take them out and it just dries in the air. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and on to the next stage. And you were saying this is unlikely to be copied by the manufacturers purely because of complication and costs. Yeah, I mean, if, if you had to send this out to a different supplier for yeah. sandblasting and then, or, or if you'd ordered it from one supplier, you would pay over and over and over again. So but since we're doing all those operations, in Germany ourselves, uh, it's a bit more straightforward, but still expensive for us to do. And given the nature of batch production from the start billet to the finished product, all the processes in between is approximately what, days or weeks? To a finished nickel plated product would be about a month. <laughs> a month. <Yeah>. Lovely. <laughs> I'm not absolutely sure if we're going to do that as a standalone video, if we're going to plug it into our main Thermal Grizzly video. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to sign off and say, this is Kit Guru with Thermal Grizzly of Computex 2025. And yes, we're on TikTok.